Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning, Griffin Gaming RPG back again for another part of Star Citizen 101. And uh, today we are continuing with our tour of ships. And uh, even though I don't have a huge compliment, I've got quite a few. And uh, this one in particular is near and dear to me because it was the very first ship that I bought when I got into Star Citizen, or I should say that I backed when I got into Star Citizen. Uh, this is the Constellation Andromeda. Uh, when this ship was released, it was the first of the multi-crew ships. Uh, everything else that had been seen had been single passenger ships, uh, or maybe a couple people, but this one was what they called a multi-crew ship, where people have various roles. Uh, in duties within the ship, and the Andromeda was the first of the series. Uh, the ship has been revamped, uh, I think, maybe four times. Uh, when I got into the game, I think it might have been just coming out of the second version of the ship, and believe you me, it has changed dramatically. In fact, I'm hoping to do uh, a show one day that shows the transformation of all the different ships over the development period. And uh, so it's been at least over two years, and this ship has just grown into something that's just incredible uh, as far as detail and uh, as far as refinement goes. Um, the Constellation Andromeda. Uh, in size, it's about 61 meters, and it has a crew complement of five. Uh, and it's, this one's considered uh, a multi-purpose. There are uh, variations on this ship. Uh, this is the Constellation Andromeda. There's the Constellation Taurus, which uh, has a greater emphasis for just like lugging cargo and transport. Uh, there's the Constellation uh, Aquila. And the Aquila is designed for space exploration. Uh, it has a um, like a moon buggy inside of it, and it's got greater uh, range as far as uh, going quantum drive, and also it has greater range for uh, sensors. And then lastly, there is the constellation Phoenix, which is a luxury version of this ship. It even has a jacuzzi. Well, I don't know if they're going to keep the jacuzzi in it, but <laughs> in the earlier versions of it, there's bars and seating and couches, and it's a, a luxury edition of the same ship. But the uh, Andromeda is considered the multi-purpose version uh, of the Constellation series. So let's uh, take a quick look on the outside, and then we'll, of course, take a tour look on the inside. Uh, again, uh, 61 meters. Uh, this ship uh, does uh, allow itself to go both in pla planet atmosphere as well as in space. Uh, you'll see these doors right underneath here. They have very large fans that are inside that help with landing and takeoff uh, when you're in an atmospheric condition on a planet, uh, landing pad, things of that nature. Okay, and in the front also we see we have a gun turret here. There are actually two gun turrets on the Andromeda, one below and one beneath at the fore of the ship. Here you can see uh, the engines. Uh, this is a very unique configuration with the ship. Um, the engines on the top there uh, actually move in and out on the ship and actually uh, turn left and right uh, depending on orientation, so if you're in atmosphere or if you're in space. Very interesting configuration. And uh, up there you can see the side access hatch that does work. Uh, again, remembering that these multi-crew ships uh, are designed and made to be boarded, pirated. And so um, you may have a situation where someone actually tries to not destroy your ship, but take over your ship by piracy. And that hatch is one of the ways that they may try to enter your ship. Okay, this is one of the guns here on the side. And we're going to keep going around. Now this ship is made by the company RSI. You'll see the logo there that's Roberts Space Industries. And you can see that even scrolled in there. Uh, each of the ships in Star Citizen are all made by various manufacturers. And the ships have a tendency to reflect the design practices of those companies. So if you see one RS RSI ship and you see another one, there will be similarities in the design, even though they may be different types of ships. One may be a bomber, one may be a, may be a fighter, one may be uh, for mining or exploration. But you'll see design similarities in all of the ships that are made by that particular company. Uh, not only that. 
in the control scheming of the ships, uh, the piloting areas, those are often reflected as identical as well. So basically, if you get in one RSI ship, you will be pretty familiar if you get in another one and try to pilot it or use the systems on it. So, But you can see this has a very unique design. And you can see the four engines there, two above and two below. Also in the back here, those aren't in the center, that's not engines, that's actually a snub fighter. It's called a, a P-72 Merlin and it is docked in the ship. And it is designed to be a snub fighter to, uh, as a source of defense for this ship if you are being attacked uh, by some other folk. Um, a person can actually board that ship from your crew and go out and be a fighter uh, to help defend this ship. Okay. Oh, also, this ship does not have um, warp capability or quantum drive capability, so uh, it can only fly within a system. So if you're going to take it to another system, it's got to be docked onto a ship like this or transported in some type of cargo ship. All right, we're going to continue around here. Um, another thing of note, if you can see, there's a large bar right there in the center of the screen, right below the two engines. Uh, that bar, and hopefully when I get a different angle on it, you'll see, is actually a weapons bar with missiles that are loaded into it. Hopefully when I come around front, we'll be able to see it. You can see the large legs, the treads here for this ship for landing, for stability. Okay, let's see if we can see those missiles from here. Uh, we can a little bit. See all those little things right in there? That actually extends out. Those arms come out and missiles are fired from there. There are also missiles fired from the top of the ship, which we will see once we get inside. Uh, this ship may not look like it's armed, but it is really, really armed uh, with a lot of weapons. It's armed to the teeth uh, for defense of itself. Okay. So we've made our circle. Out front here is uh, the P-72 Merlin. This is what it looks like. We saw it attached in the back of the ship, but this one's here just for demonstration purposes, so you can see what it looks like. And uh, we'll do a, a little video on that, maybe a little bit later, but uh, I just wanted you to be able to see it so that when we're inside the ship, you'll recognize it. Okay, so let's border. We're going to go ahead and go to this hatch here, and this has changed dramatically since uh, I first uh, tried to board one of these ships. Okay. This comes down as a very uh, cool sealed docking, or uh, platform rather, to board the ship once we get on it properly. F again. F is our button. This takes us into the ship. And you see the floor of the airlock close. Now previously when they made this, that airlock, uh, there wasn't an airlock. You just came straight up in the ship. and. The entire ship was open to you, and of course, most of us who, you know, are pretty much sci-fi geeks said, hey, they can't stay that way because oxygen's going to exit the cabin if that opens up uh, in space for some reason. So they went back, and of course, they, I guess they probably were already planning on doing this, but they built an airlock now, so this is a secure area. Also, these doors weren't necessarily here before either. This was all an open area from one end of the ship to the other, which again, uh, would have caused problems in relation to oxygen and atmosphere. So anyway, before we get all into the history of the ship, let's talk about where we are right now. We are midship, and uh, in this area, again, as I mentioned uh, previously, uh, these ships are designed so that they are functional. And uh, when you go on a ship and you see areas like this, usually they are not just cosmetic or costume. They are functional in some way. So, for example, these may be panels uh, for systems of the ship when they get damaged. These may be lockers on the ship. I don't know what they are right now because they haven't designated it, but you get my point. And one of the reasons why there's so much detail is because these things will be usable in-game. This is a weapons rack that's here, so in case someone does try to board your ship, your crew will have weapons available to help defend it. This area here is basically a dining area or a rest area. I have yet to try to mess with this table and see if it will open. Let's see if it does. I'm, oh, it's allowing me to sit. Let's see if the table comes out. I don't think it will. I think it just lets me sit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I have seen previously where this you did actually you were actually able to activate that table. I 
I've never really tried. As many times as I've been on here, I haven't even tried to raise the table up before. Let's see. Let's see if we can get it to come up. Probably not. Nope. Just seating. Okay. Well, again, as I mentioned previously, uh, Star Citizen's an alpha, so some things work, some things don't. Uh, but you get the general idea. This would be a dinner table that would basically come up out of the floor, and the crew would be able to sit here and eat. Okay, let's see what else we have in this area. Um, as on all of the larger ships, uh, there's a restroom, which is here. I'm not sure if this opens or not. It doesn't look like it does. Nope, it doesn't. Uh, but this is a restroom. And we're going to go to the back of the ship first. Uh, this area here, which is actually a rest area, but it is also the area for the emergency ejection pods. If the ship is under attack or the ship is on imminent destruction, the crew can enter into these areas here. And once you're inside, this one we can actually get in. Hopefully we'll get in a lot faster if the ship's about to be blown up. <laughs> but uh, once you're inside, uh, this area seals and um, I'm sure there's a countdown and then these are ejected out of the ship and uh, a distress beacon is sent out and uh, you'll be retrieved hopefully by someone who likes you uh, not somebody who doesn't like you uh, but this is just the in and out process of getting in and out of these uh, escape pods and there are four of them here as you can see now once again we've got another one of these ships here that says that it's manned by five but there are only four ejection seats so guess what somebody gets to stay behind uh, will the captain go down with the ship, or will it be every man for himself? Who knows? Okay, so this is the midship on the uh, Andromeda. Uh, there's an airlock above here, which does work, does operate. As you can see, that would be the airlock. Alright, and let's, uh, let's make our way to the rear of the ship. Go through this door here. This brings us into the cargo hold area, a uh, very large area. Um, let's see, I think the cargo holds 134 is the capacity on that. And um, one of the cool things about this is that you actually be able to handle cargo uh, in Star Citizen. If you uh, purchase things, if you're doing trading, uh, if you need to do a job or you're moving items from one location to another, uh, you will be able to put cargo in the ship. And of course, it will have certain size, mass, uh, all that stuff. So let's take a little walk around here. Uh, remember before I talked to you before also about Star Citizen uh, having various systems that actually work. Uh, for example, this is the open and close for the cargo area. So if we push F, you actually see that whole cargo level drop down. And it can be loaded with equipment. Uh, even vehicles can load onto that. And uh, then of course, you can close it back very large area there. Okay. Ladders at both ends to be able to access the cargo if necessary. Again, here are areas for different systems in the ship. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, if there's damage done to the ship when the ship is out uh, in space, uh, some of those areas can be repaired by the crew, which is why this is a multi-crew ship. They will run through here and fix certain things that aren't working. Um, I mentioned to you before that there is a missile rack on the top of the ship. There are two of them, one on each side. This is where those missiles come from. They literally uh, channel up to the top of the ship from this location. And then this is the side airlock, which does work. This airlock, as you can see, is extended right now. Uh, it closes and then there's room for you to be inside and then the uh, outside door opens. I'm going to close it back and you'll actually see the collar pull in. And that's when the collar comes in. Okay. Awesome. We're going to continue on and you can see some of these panels here. They have uh, certain titles on them. This one says it's shield generators. So if there's damage here, evidently this is one of the panels that we would go into to do repairs. On this side over here, we see there's a gravity generator for the ship. And yes, you can actually go into certain areas and uh, uh, deactivate things. So if you were to go on this ship, you could go on and actually deactivate the gravity on the ship, which would make uh, the ship weightless for the, for the crew. 
uh, be having a shootout in uh, weightless space, which would be interesting. Okay, and there's another view again of the cargo area. You can see those missile racks that are up there to the left and right. And again, we're you know, just always amazed at the amount of detail that CIG is placing uh, in the game. Uh, one of the things about uh, that's really surprised us a lot is watching when a ship is destroyed. Um, when the ships break apart, you actually see the cabling and the wiring and the piping uh, when the fragments are breaking off. There's a lot of detail here. Okay, so we're going to go into this rear area of the ship, Section C, Section D. And when we get back here, we again see areas for systems, gravity generator, power plant, again, again a lot of detail here, high voltage, and then in the rear area here is where the P-72, the ship we saw outside that was attached to the back of the ship, uh, this is where we see it is docked, and yes, you can go into this area, and yes, you can board the P-72, uh, allows you to get inside. I'm sure there's some mechanism for it being a dropship where it would drop loose and you'd be able to use it to defend the Constellation. Hopefully uh, your crew member is a good snub fighter pilot. Yeah, we're going to come on out of there. Okay. Alright, that's the P-72. That's where it's located. Okay. Again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to uh, type away and uh, hopefully I'll be able to answer them for you as again I'm not a big authority on Star Citizen but I've been uh, into it for a little while and hopefully I'll be able to answer any questions you got. Okay so as I mentioned earlier uh, these ladders do work. Uh, I'm going to just jump down here versus climbing down just so you can see the size of this cargo area. It's pretty large. A fairly large area. And this ship can be used for everything from smuggling uh, to exploration. Um, but again, as I mentioned earlier, there is a variant of this ship that is designed specifically for exploration. But I can see a lot of people who do trading, things of that nature, would use a ship like this. And again, this is considered a, a multi-purpose ship. Alright, I'm going to close those doors. I love the fact that they've added the doors. Uh, it definitely adds more realism in the sense of the ship being airtight, particularly if there's damage in areas. Um, CIG has talked about the fact that there may be areas that will be damaged uh, uh, due to weapons hits, and uh, you may be losing oxygen in those areas. Um, whether you're wearing a flight suit or not will have an impact as well. Um, obviously, with a ship that's airtight like this, you may not wear a flight suit. Uh, then again, you might decide to, just for uh, safety's sake. All right, so now we're entering into the fore of the ship, Section A, and again, you can see there are systems here for avionics. Over here, the shield generator. Again, shield generator. There's a panel on the floor there for avionics. And again, you can see there's a lot of detail going on here, a lot of detail the design of the ship. Now this ship is, I wish I could show you uh, how much different the ship is now. It has changed dramatically uh, since I first began to uh, back Star Citizen. Fire extinguisher, yeah. <laughs> and, and we'll probably have to use it too for some reason because uh, uh, right now when you take the ship out into space if you get damaged, fires break out, uh, there's sparks going all over the place so uh, I definitely believe that, that they will probably be functional. Uh, right here in front of me is the lower and upper turrets of the ship. I'm going to check out the upper one first. And again this is a uh, five crew ship um, so you would have three people who would be in the uh, pilot, navigator, and engineer seats and then two people who would man the turret areas. So this is the upper turret and you can see that there's a pretty good view from here. You can see around pretty good. Okay. So this is the upper turret. 
And um, interestingly enough, because this is one of the first ships that was designed, um, CIG has talked about the fact that they constantly learn things with, with each new ship. And what they try to do is take what they've learned and apply it to ships that were made previously. So as I mentioned, the ship looked totally different uh, a year, uh, six, well, six months ago, a year, two years ago. The ship was entirely different. The general layout was the same, but it's become much more refined. The details have grown. Uh, and, and the realism is there. And one of the great things about CIG is that they do listen to the backers. They listen to the suggestions that they're given. Let's check out this lower one now. And this is an example of something that's different. Uh, if you look at my video on the Retaliator, you'll notice that whenever there's a lower turret, you normally invert 180 degrees. On this ship, you don't. You still remain in the same upward position that you're in uh, in the above deck. Uh, but that also has an effect on how we see outside the ship. Now, some people have said that this is bad. They don't like the fact that uh, the view is much more inhibited on this lower turret than it is on the upper turret. But one of the things that we find out about each of the ships and each of the companies is that all ships have to have some type of vulnerability. You can't have the best of both worlds in every ship. Uh, for example, on some of the MISC ships, they have a very limited field of view. Um, most of them are designed for not necessarily fighting or combat. They're designed for uh, hauling, trading, things of that nature. And so a hauler trader wouldn't necessarily have to have this 180 degree view uh, for combat like a fighter ship would. Uh, and so they are really being very realistic in the sense of, you know, what ships uh, are applied for, what they should be doing, and how they should be designed, uh, so that you don't have every ship that has the most powerful gun, the widest view angle, uh, the fastest engines, so that there will be balance in the game, and it'll make the players think about uh, when they're ready to go out and use a certain particular ship for a certain job, is this the best job for what it is I'm trying to do? Uh, so it's a challenge. It's going to be a challenge for all of us. It's not going to be easy, which is great, because as far as I'm concerned, video games have become too easy. Um, something as simple as uh, that I love so far in, in Star Citizen, I hope that they don't do. I hope they never include overhead maps. Uh, I came up from the day where we had no overhead maps. We used to use graph paper. Yeah, I'm an old guy. Uh, but people have become so, I don't want to say it in a bad way, but have become somewhat lazy. Uh, in the sense of using our minds and remembering where places are and how to get certain places. And I think it's challenging to go back to that. Uh, there are a couple uh, locations in the game now where we go to these places. And you have to remember the map in your head. You can't be looking at some overhead map showing you where the turns are, where the enemy is. And hopefully CIG will stick with that. You know, I, I really hope they do. Uh, again, this is Griffin Gaming. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me. We're just doing a quick tour of the uh, RSI Constellation Andromeda. There are a lot of videos out there like this, but I decided I didn't have one, so I'm going to do one. Okay, so we just checked out the upper and lower turrets, so that's for crew members uh, 4 and 5. Let's go to the front of the ship and see the other areas. Um, you can see here there are three seats here, and again, this area has changed dramatically. The detail has increased, uh, I can't even tell you, exponentially. These were just basically seats back in the day, and now they're, they're look just totally functional. Uh, here is the commander seat. And um, when you get into these seats, each seat has its own function, uh, or each has its own role. So obviously, uh, from the command seat. Welcome to Robert Space Industries. Enjoy the ride. System check. From the command seat, you're able to control, obviously, navigation. You're able to control power. You're able to control weapons. Uh, and you also see systems. And you can see here there are four screens, two above and two below. And usually these screens can be uh, customized to which screen you want where on most of the ships. Um, but again, just handling that uh, for one person would be a lot, not to mention that you're still trying to pilot the ship at the same time. Uh, and so you have these two other roles to your left and right that have certain responsibilities as well. And actually, uh, I've flown in uh, one of the positions previously with some other people, and it was really cool. Um, there's another thing too that I like about this. It's allowing us to share responsibilities in ships where you know the pilot doesn't have to do everything, uh, but everybody has a role that's important. Uh, on this side of the ship here, when I uh, use this position, you can see there's a large display 
that raises up and then it comes back down. Um, on this side, I was able to control power management and shields. Uh, and when we were in battle, uh, it was pretty rough because you could see the shields dissipating uh, on different sides of the ship and I had to reallocate power to try to protect the ship which allows the person who's piloting the ship to focus on where the enemy are or where targets are and at the same time I have to be paying attention to what they're doing and listening to what they're saying is going on so uh, this is I, I was very focused I, I, I hate to say it but it was very little time for me to look out the window and enjoy the view. I really had to pay attention to what was going on on this LED screen and basically uh, adjust systems so that the ship was protected. <laughs> we still got blown up eventually, but <laughs> anyway, uh, it was fun. It was really cool to have that role. And so uh, one of the things that's cool is if a person doesn't own a ship like this, if you're not in the place when you start the game where you have an Andromeda or some large ship, multi-crew ship, the cool thing is is that there's a role for you and you, believe me, people are always happy to have someone volunteer to say, hey, do you need a crew member? Because as much as I may want to take this ship out and fly it, the reality of it is I can't do it by myself. If I, even now, if I take this game out by myself solo, or the ship out I should say solo, uh, more than likely I'm going to get destroyed. Uh, you got to have people who are manning these other roles for you in support. Um, and everybody gets it. Everybody understands that everybody's role is important um, because of what we call permadeath, <laughs> which is uh, something that uh, a lot of games don't have. If you die in Star Citizen, it will affect your character. And so it's not going to be this typical thing of, well, let's just blow up and respawn, which we get used to in a lot of games today. No, if you die in this game, it's going to mean something. You're going to lose something. Some of it may be your physicality of your body. It may be, uh, for example, if there's an explosion and you lose an arm, you will come back uh, with an arm that's not functional. You may have to get a cybernetic arm. Eventually, if you get enough damage to your physical body, you will die and you will have to basically pass on your character and the things you own to another person or another character that you have. So, um, yeah, you'll become a part of history, <laughs> gaming history, but you won't be around. Um, so anyway, that's uh, basically uh, our little tour of the Constellation Andromeda. And uh, again, uh, this is one of the first multi-crew ships uh, that was released for Star Citizen. We're going to take this down. And uh, there are several now that are multi-crew that have come out. Uh, we have a tour that we just did recently of the Retaliator. Uh, there is also the Starfarer, uh, which is the fueling ship, which holds a complement of eight people. And uh, there are going to be more to come, more and more to come. Uh, so, again, I appreciate you hanging out with me today. Uh, if you're not following, I'd be happy to have you as a follower to my channel. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter. Uh, at Griffin Gaming RPG, and uh, we will continue this series of Star Citizen 101 with more ships. And uh, within the next week or two, we're expecting even a few more ships to be launched by CIG. And I'm looking forward to being able to show those off because I got a couple of them on layaway that I'm waiting on still. Um, but if you're not into or if you're not a player of uh, Star Citizen, you can go to robertspaceindustries.com and check it out. Um, from time to time, they actually do times where people can play the game for free. Just remember that it is an alpha. It's not in beta. It is not finished. It's in its early stages of development, but this is much further than many games uh, that I've seen that have been in development. And uh, so far, they've been doing a really, really great job. So again, thanks for hanging out with me, and uh, you try and have a good day. Take care.